Chapter 8, Let's Build a Culture. I hope by now I've demonstrated how lean thinking can transform a business and a home. You should have a sense that lean is focused on the concept of eliminating waste through continuous improvement and that it all begins by asking one simple question, what bugs me? I've also discussed how lean can become a grind when we are focused on the process instead of people. In fact, I believe that this is the point where most people give up on lean. They are 90% process focused and 10% people focused, when in reality, it should be 100% the opposite. I came away from my second trip to Japan with the clear conviction that in order for lean to work in the long term and to stick, I would have to build a lean culture. Without a doubt, this is the biggest challenge. How does one build a culture of continuous improvement? How do you get people to always look for ways to improve? Well, I have to admit, I was as ignorant as as the next guy. I saw a shining display of a lean culture at Hawks, and that was how I wanted my company to look. I knew it had to be simple so that everybody at FastCap from the shop floor to the office manager could buy into it. I also knew it had to be sustainable, something that could become a natural way of thinking and would support and even reinforce our company and the employee's belief system. Our belief system was simple. We wanted continuous improvement and a focus on quality and the elimination of waste at every turn. We started the effort by imitating what we saw at Hawks, beginning with what we refer to as the morning meeting. At 8 o'clock every morning, we committed a very short time, maybe 5 or 10 minutes, to a gathering together before any production work could begin. We started with the most basic things, such as reading aloud the daily sales and reviewing the mistakes we made from the day before. We would open the floor to suggestions on how to prevent those mistakes and what new processes we might need to consider for improvement. Finally, we reviewed any new processes introduced from the day before and evaluated the effectiveness of those new methods. Those were the three or four things we did consistently every day. Then we had an idea. My wife, Leanne, realized how much the books we read influenced us. We were always reading some new book on the market, and on a daily basis, we'd find some time to discuss them. They were usually about business, self-improvement, or history. Our general manager, John, was also an avid reader, and the three of us often talked between ourselves and reviewed what we learned and liked or didn't like about each book. Some of our favorites have been Good to Great, Built to Last, uh, Successful Habits of Visionary Companies by Jim Collins. We also like Built from Scratch, The Home Depot Story. As company leaders, reading and discussing the principles from these bestsellers gave us a point of reference for problem solving. It dawned on us that maybe involving the whole company in reading these books would help to unify our perspective. After all, we were trying to create a culture of problem solvers. In fact, my goal was to create a culture of the best problem solvers in the world, literally. So it made sense to share these pearls of wisdom from some of the most visionary business leaders in the world. We thought they should be shared with everyone at FastCap. So we incorporated into the morning meeting a bit of reading out loud from these great books. We would discuss certain highlights we came across and open the floor for discussion and comments. Even though we only read two or three pages a day, we were committed to the concept of learning together. We went through so many books, some of our favorites were Raving Fans and The Purple Cow. We were relentless in our commitment to the process, and as a result, it allowed all of our people to be on the same page as the management team. Our morning meeting had evolved from just five or 10 minutes into 30 or 40 minutes as we reviewed the sales numbers, the mistakes, the improvements, and shared a few book club pages for reflection and consideration. Before long, our team members were starting to think the way we thought since we were now literally on the same page. We were introducing our employees to world-class ideas and innovative leaders in the business world. Then we branched from self-improvement and business books into history. I love history, so I started to encourage our people to consider things from a historical perspective. 
How did people in the past solve problems? What were the factors that they considered before they solved the problems? This kind of critical thinking became integral to the building of a culture of continuous improvement. The first three months were hard work. It was like pulling teeth, keeping everybody enthusiastic or even interested. We didn't get everybody on board, and some thought maybe we were a little crazy. Why were we wasting this first hour and a half of the day not building products? Why were we standing around a circle in this crazy morning meeting? After three or four months, things started to look pretty positive. Then after six months, because we didn't give up, just like a good diet, things really started to look good. And after one year, we were on fire. We were putting our money where our mouth is, so to speak. We weren't just talking about continuous improvement. We were teaching our people what it looked like on a daily basis. The first year we implemented the morning meeting, it grew and it morphed and it continually got better. As good as the morning meeting became, we made one more significant change after the first year. The meeting was always led by either me or John, my general manager. As demands on our time grew with our expanding business, we found that there were times when neither of us could be there because of our travel schedules. It was very difficult for the meeting and the substance of the meeting to be maintained in our absence. We decided we needed to teach our people how to lead a meeting and what better way to do it than to let them experience it. Now we were really beginning to walk the talk. We decided that not only would someone else lead the morning meeting in our absence, we would rotate the duties of being a leader amongst our employees. We appointed a new person to be a leader every day. So now we're not only teaching our people about continuous improvement, but we were training people to be leaders. We took people who were as shy as church mice, who had never spoke in front of a group of people before, and we nurtured and trained them to do something they never thought they could do. Well, guess what? Did they feel good about themselves? They felt fabulous about themselves because they came to work every day and they saw personal improvement as well as improvement in their work environment and their workstation. This is the beginning of how we built a culture of continuous improvement. We build leaders every day at FastCap. During this tremendous curve in our company culture, my friend Jeff Koss, who also was working on building a lean culture in his business, introduced me to a powerful concept. He said, Paul, if you want your people to move to the next level, start letting people tour your facility. I thought, that sounds like a real challenge. Are we good enough to have other people look at us as an example of what lean looks like? Jeff said, when you're on stage all the time and when outsiders come to look at what you're doing, your people will naturally want to live up to the expectation. They will get better by default. So we began inviting and allowing other companies to tour our facility. What better way to show them our continuous improvement efforts? This proved to have other benefits that I never expected. Our people felt good about the fact that other people wanted to see what they were doing. As I discovered in human behavior, the number one thing that everybody really wants in life is to be recognized and told they're doing a good job. By inviting others to come and observe our company, we were saying to the world, look at what great things we're doing. It was like putting your best projects on display at the science fair for the judges. By providing a tour environment at FastCap, we were essentially communicating to our people that they were doing an exceptional job because people from all over the world were beginning to tour our facility. We've even had dignitaries and high-level politicians come through to see what we were doing. Why? Because we are delivering exceptional results at FastCap. We've never laid anyone off or cut salaries or pay rates. And in spite of the biggest economic downturn in the last 100 years, we continue to expand our business. We do business in 40 countries and counting. We are a highly profitable company with the highest paid employees in the region from top to bottom. We have a lot to be proud of. And sometimes in our quest for continuous improvement, we lose sight of that. Our success is due to the focus on building a culture of growing people. We don't just talk about it. We spend thousands of dollars every day training and teaching our people. Remember what the guy at Lexus said? This is known as putting your money where your mouth is. People who tour our plants ask, what do you do for employee orientation? 
our response is, every employee is orientated every day they come to work. Most companies dust off the new employee manual and review it for a week or two, and then 90% of it is forgotten. At FastCap, we review our nine goals, 14 principles, endless improvements, hundreds of products, every mistake, and every raving customer response we receive. History, culture, the Constitution, every day. We built that culture by investing time and money into training and teaching our people the value and rewards of improvement, going right back to what the VP of Lexus told me was the most important thing for any world-class premier company, teaching and training people. At the end of the day, each one of us has the job title of process engineer. Our job is not to build products, but to improve the process of how we build products. This is what makes us a distinctively lean culture. The order of improvements is equally important. First, we improve the individual. Then we improve the process. And then we improve the product by default. So you can think of it as double IPP. We improve the individual, the process, and then the product. We like to say at FastCap that we're in the business of growing people. The result of growing people is that we produce outstanding products. We work in an innovative environment where ideas are welcomed with the same enthusiasm, whether they come from the entry-level employee or the CFO. The expectation of every person at FastCap is that things will continually get better every day. The culture supports and demands it. This is how you measure progress of building a lean culture smiles. You will see more smiles because it feels good when everyone is experiencing improvement and working in a clean environment. Nurturing people to be their best, taking the time to review results, listening to ideas for improvements, and learning together is what our morning meeting is all about. From the entry-level employee on their very first day of work all the way up to the owner, we take on the process of learning and improving together. Nobody is giving a pass. Nobody is left out of the expectation for improvement. That's how we started building our culture at FastCap. The morning meeting was just the beginning. The one thing, show me your checkbook and where you spend your money, and I'll show you what you value. Hi, I'm Vikram Bhatt. I'm running a jewelry manufacturing business in Mumbai, India. As business leaders, I have discovered that we should not be building products, but focusing on improving the process of building products. And that can only happen when we spend our time in teaching and training our people. We are a team of 120 people, so we had to be careful to select that one thing would have the maximum impact on our culture. So this is the strong thing which comes out of this chapter, is the culture part. Your competitors may buy the same machine, use the same technology, or hire a few extra people. But the culture which you establish in your company is something which cannot be copied. This comes out very strongly in this chapter. So many people taking part in the meeting, it meant a lot of time and money for the kind and size of team we have. But now over a couple of months we have realized it, there couldn't have been a better choice to make. Establishing a rhythm of daily morning meeting is an integral step towards building this culture. Once we started meeting regularly in the morning, we were all now on the same page as far as all the performance parameters are concerned. It became very transparent, but also as advised in this chapter, we started reading books and sharing our thoughts and improvement ideas. So what started as a small meeting gradually evolved into a structured meeting which contributed heavily to a learning culture and everyone now leaves the morning meeting learning something new and interesting. At FastCap, we spend thousands of dollars every day teaching and training our people. Why? Because we know that if we do that, we will get the culture of continuous improvement that we desire 
we will grow our people and ultimately we'll have satisfied customers. A great video to watch is the morning meeting and we also have a document called the morning meeting document, which is the outline of our morning meeting because whenever people come into our facility, they're always asking, well, can I get an outline of that morning meeting? And we don't give anybody any paper because we're kind of paperless. We don't want to have anything to do with that. And if you want it, you can pull it from our website. It's all free.